Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Today, to do a exciting video that I've been waiting for for a while, I want to do a spotlight of the Rex Supply Co. Ambassador Adjustable Safety Razor. So this is a razor that is near and dear to my heart. Um, this is my first razor that I designed uh, for a new company I started, Rex. And that's probably the first point of, of uh, note for anyone out there um, that the Razor Emporium is more or less the parent company of Rex Supply Co. Rex does have one other business partner involved with it, um, but this is kind of a brand that has started to become uh, a place where I can use my knowledge and my inspiration of you know vintage shaving and stuff, but now put it into a manufacturing context. So three years ago in September of 2017, we unveiled the uh, ambassador and started shipping them out for, uh, for some pre-sales that had been going on that year. And that was the first iteration of the razor. And when people first got it, they were really excited to see uh, one of the first, I think the first stainless steel American made adjustable razors on the market. And uh, we're really happy that here we are three years later and we still retain that title, so to speak, that we are the, uh, the first and, and so far only company to be able to take on making an adjustable stainless steel razor right here in the United States of America. So that's kind of the big, the big first thing I want to start off with uh, for this razor. It really did turn a lot of heads when we came out with it. And especially for the first razor we were going to put out to have an adjustable razor, I think was huge. At the time, so many people were doing and still are doing three piece razors and we have our three piece, the Envoy, but I really wanted to make a splash with something that uh, most people said was too hard to do or, you know, uh, to be too costly or whatever. So the ambassador strives to be a razor that is easy to use and uh, very efficient and, and can go from mild to wild. It can, it can really be a very mild shaving razor and it can be a very aggressive shaving razor in one handle. There's no need to change blade plates like some of the other uh, systems out there that use, you know, like a low, medium, high, different plates you can use to change it. You can change it with just to turn the knob. And I think it's the first thing I want to also address. I see some people who use this, this razor and they'll loosen the bottom handle that controls the cap and then they'll to, to adjust. This razor model uh, does not need that. These two mechanisms have nothing to do with each other as opposed to let's say a tr tr traditional Gillette razor like a Fat Boy or a Slim where those two mechanisms are kind of interchanged um, and do affect each other. This does not. The mechanism to adjust the, uh, the blade tray is separate in, entirely from the, uh, the knob down here to take the cap off for blades. So that's the first thing I want to point out. Second thing, I, I kind of briefly just went through it, uh, the packaging. I'm really happy this is our second iteration of the box. This, this box will now be used for uh, all of our Rex accessories, not just the razors, but the travel case will fit in here, the stand will fit in here, and they have different cutouts. So you'll see this has kind of a really heavy fabric cutout. And uh, I showed this on the Envoy video, and I have to show it again. But I went with this material because first off, it looks really nice, it's soft, it's different, it's not that cheap foam that everyone uses. And it also is really squishy, it really holds the razor in. And I always do the Dairy Queen test, that you can turn it upside down and the razor won't shake out. So it's, it's great, it holds it snug, it also won't scratch the, the uh, stainless steel. So we, before we were putting a little protective um, plastic cover over this, almost like you have on a flat panel TV to pull it off. But now with this new material as the liner, you don't have to worry about that at all. So it's a, ter a ter terrific uh, uh, material to use and it's proprietary. I don't think anyone knows what this is and where we get it. So I'm really happy about that too. It's kind of exclusive to us. But the handsome packaging is, is kind of the first experience with Rex. Of course, the inspector's ticket, uh, the lifetime warranty, Another big thing I wanted to do with, with Rex was bring back some of these hallmarks of the, the past. You know, that's why we say revisit excellence right on the box that people used to care so much about how they made something. So that's one thing I wanted to bring back was this idea of caring about the way you make something and care about how you make it and also wanting to stand behind it. That's why we offer this lifetime warranty. And uh, many of the razors 
you know, uh, I'm not sure if this is a positive or negative to mention, but we've probably had back, you know, out of the couple thousand raises we've made, we've had back, you know, maybe a hundred or so for different things along the way. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, it was our first razor we came out with. And uh, anyone who wants to see one of those, they'll notice the very first thing is that the lather holes are not these big ovals. You'll see the original series had a thinner guard and also the lather holes were square. And they'll also be denoted, of course, by the, the serial number. You know, we're, we're up to the letter P right now for 2020. The first iteration was letter M, like Matthew, for uh, 2017. And we had an initial issue with the compression spring um, not really working right and kind of corroding. It was a, uh, a zinc coated steel spring. And uh, the spring company that's based here in, in the United States promised me that that uh, a, a zinc coating on the steel would be absolutely fine and very corrosion resistant. Well, it, it turned out to not be, and there's, it's one of those things that we, can, we really couldn't tell until you start using them and have a bunch of them out there in the market. And we ended up having to you know, pay postage both ways for these original M2017 razors to come back and we would take it apart and change the compression spring to a 100% stainless steel spring, which is now what we have. And uh, ever since we did that, we didn't have another issue with the compression spring. But um, I wanted to kind of touch upon that because some people had asked about that in the, the first iteration. And, you know, those are the M3 razors. We changed a couple other things between M3 and M4, so fourth quarter. We tried making the guard a little bit thicker. The first initial batch with this razor with a thin guard was just really, really hard to machine. And we kind of always had deflection issues where the, the drill bits would be pushing down and drilling and actually bending this stainless steel. So we, we had to thicken it up a little bit to avoid that. Um, but in doing so, the shave got a little bit more aggressive. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and that would be the beginning of 2018. Starting with the letter N, like Nancy, uh, those razors were completely different. We also found a new manufacturing shop here in Gilbert, Arizona, the greater Phoenix area basically, to do the machining. And that's when our problems and everything with the razor really smoothed out. And the razor is basically what you see today. It hasn't changed since 2018 in any significant way. The shave hasn't changed. Um, so I really wanted to mention that, that there's really three versions and the first two happened within the first two production runs. And then it's been a smooth sailing ever since. Let's talk nuts and bolts a second about the Ambassador. This weighs 106 grams. It's made of marine grade stainless steel right here in the USA, every component. And its blade gap range is 0 0.012 inches at the minimum setting to 0 0.051 inches at the highest setting. And it can obviously go anywhere in between those two numbers. All Rex razors are individually serial numbered with a number of production, so usually a four or five digit number with its actual number in our scheme of, of production when it was made, but then also a date code letter and a date code number that are in line with Gillette. So in 20 years from now, if someone wanted to go back and ask, you know, when was this razor made, they can look at a chart and see the letter code for the year and the number code for the quarter. So this razor is N like Nancy number four, that means 2018 fourth quarter, this razor over here is date coded P1, P like Paul, so that's going to be 2020 first quarter. So that can tell you all about that. Other thing I really wanted to take a, a moment to talk about was the construction. You know, I, I kind of mentioned earlier that it's a two-piece razor. You're going to take the, you know, you loosen the bottom knob with down here, it drops, and then you can take the cap off and you can put your blade on. Um, some people like to load up the blade on the cap first. Some people like to put it on the flat blade tray area. Uh, and then you can screw it and secure it down. The, you'll notice that the tolerances of this cap are really, really tight. It's not able to move around a lot. And that's by design. We don't want any blade chatter. But more importantly, kind of the big picture here I want to touch upon is some people have balked at the price. Some people say $250 for an American-made razor, stainless steel, adjustable that's just that's just ridiculous and i understand i mean i work hard for my money i'm sure everyone out there out there also works very hard for their money um, but i wanted to take a moment i'm going to use my other razor here this is my personal one from the bathroom uh, and i wanted to take it apart we usually put a, a little bit of thread lock on this handle to head connection to keep this from coming apart 
but mine, I did not do that. So I could do this and show you all the different components that go into this razor. And I want to just quickly talk about each piece. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is that uh, there are a total of 10 parts on this razor. So I'll count them out for you. We have the cap is one, and this long stem is two. As you'll see a little seam right here, this actually screws in. We thread lock that. So two, here's three, four. Again, the same thing, this long threaded st uh, stud here, and then this flat blade tray are connected. So it's three, four. Number five with the adjustment wheel. Number six with the spring. Number seven with the handle. Number eight with the guard. And number nine and 10, we have the knob to undo the, the cap and then this little tiny stainless steel retention clip that keeps the, uh, the whole you know, knob inside the handle. So there's 10 different parts. If you think about your average American-made three-piece razor, they can go anywhere from 100, 150, almost even $200 for a three-piece razor. Here we have a 10-piece razor, and it's not three times the cost. You'd think you know, a three-piece razor costing 150. Well, if we multiply that by three, we'd be at nine pieces, but we're not at a $450 razor. Um, so I really want to point that out, that there's, there's 10 different components here, and it's, it's a lot more complicated than making a three-piece razor. Hence, it was a, kind of a big goal for me to want to come out with our first iteration being this adjustable razor. Um, but each one of these components is, is completely necessary. If, trust me, if there was a way to eliminate a piece, I totally would have. But uh, this is something that is a very unique machine as well. The original inspiration for this razor was a Gibbs. And a lot of people talk about the fact that this is a, a copy of a Gibbs razor. And if you take apart a Gibbs, it has essentially the same uh, 10 components. It's not terribly different. They don't have this little retention clip down here. The knob just comes completely out of the handle. Uh, this was a feature that I, I kind of got inspired from by both Mercur and um, you know the Mercur 34 does this. But also later, um, there was a precision micromatic razor that was kind of inspired by Gibbs as well. And they did this. And I really like that. That doesn't fall out. A lot of the time developing this razor was, was not only coming up with the pieces, but then handing it to people and handing it to customers in our lobby and saying, hey, I'm working on this new razor. What do you think about it? And I would watch all the time as people would take this out and then it would drop on the ground and they weren't expecting it. And then they were fumbling with all these parts in their hands. I said, you know, we can at least keep that in place. So that was kind of one of the design inspirations for that. But Another big thing with the Gibbs, the Gibbs has a plastic handle that just has vertical serrations. We went with a stainless steel handle, of course, and we put the cross hatch, both vertical and horizontal. And that really helps you to grip it. It won't uh, fall through your fingers. I used to hold the Gibbs razor in the bathroom and it would just slip through my fingers because there's only, you know, uh, lines going in one direction. So I wanted to stop that from happening. Other big thing we did was made the, the nut bigger. Again, it seems like a little thing, but I wanted it to be very easy to grab and adjust and move. Um, fundamentally as well, the blade angle that this razor holds the blade at is completely different than Gibbs. Ours is a 20 degree angle. I have no problem telling anyone that. You can, you can use a, as a measurement tool and figure that out. It's a 20 degree chamfer, just like on the Envoy. Uh, that's different than the Gibbs. The guard dimension is also different. Everyone says, oh, it's blade gap, blade gap, blade gap. Well, if you, if you change this dimension, you make this wider or narrower, the gap is just another figure now and you can change how aggressive it is. You can have a giant gap with a very mild razor if you make this just a little bit bigger. So this dimension's different. A um, couple other things, a blade tray, we change the, the, the way that is. The Gibbs, it's only one direction. You have to put it on just one way only. This, this blade tray is easy for us to have it go either way. Um, there's a bunch of other little things, but I, I guess I really wanted to point out the fact that the Gibbs certainly inspired the ambassador but uh, it is not a copy of it. We didn't get out the measurement tools and, and try to figure out exactly the way the Gibbs you know, shaved. We took it as an inspiration for the mechanism of how to adjust the razor, and that's about it. Past there, it came down to me sitting in the bathroom with prototype after prototype and making small incremental changes and saying, oh yeah, that's a little bit better than the other one. Oh, let me try the other one, okay. All right, and I call, call up the, the guy at the machine shop. Okay, I like the, the, the second one you did here, you know number three versus number four, whatever. So a lot of trial and error, and that's kind of how the, the razor developed. Um, and we've learned a lot about razor making now after this. So 
kind of a, a very different experience. A lot of people think that razors are designed by computer programs and everyone's sitting with drawing boards. Well, it has to shave good, number one. And so I've been very fortunate that when the razor came out, um, a lot of people like the way it's shaved. And I, I guess my skin, my beard, my face is a good you know, comparison to other people. And people have said it's their favorite razor, that they don't even grab for other razors anymore, that uh, it's, it's become their, uh, their, their number one razor in their den. And that's awesome. It, it's very flattering. Some people don't like it, and that's fine too. Not everyone's going to like every razor. But I, I really wanted to point out that price thing because it's always bugged me when someone says, Oh, it's a two hundred fifty dollar razor. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And I was like, well, try to make it. Try to make ten components in America and try to get a price down where you can, um, you know, make it reasonably. So, um, that's kind of all I got. I mean, I, I did, I did want to talk about briefly that it does have the same, you know, uh, features as the Envoy. It has this little hollow area, and that was kind of a, another design point that I did get from Gibbs. They had a hollow handle, and this facilitates drying. And it goes all the way through this hole, all the way through, and that helps have water come out, dry the internals, dry the spring. But it also allowed me to do something Gibbs did not do and come up with a matching stand for it that could use that same hole with a little dowel down there to hold it very nicely. And then again, we use that same idea with the travel case. Again, original design, not something that Gibbs or anyone else came up with to have a really nice functional travel case that could fit into snugly, securely. It's, it's being hugged by nothing other than leather and black walnut. Uh, so that is another cool accessory that is a, a Rex exclusive that you can have this nice travel case to throw your razor into. Uh, and I think it's the best way to travel. Just to throw that into your bag. Feel so cool, feel so dapper. I recently went um, on a kind of a camping trip and I had this with me and it felt so neat to pull it out and um, felt really manly. It's a, it's a cool case for sure. So that's the ambassador. Uh, I kind of wanted to make this video for a while, really talking about all these little changes, little features, little things, the design inspiration behind it. Um, you know, I guess the last thing I didn't even really talk about was the adjustment. The fact that it's an adjustable razor that you know you can you can turn this little dial right here and here is wide open and then you can close it up all the way. I know some people that do use it on number one. Um, I know some people that use it on number you know four or five. Most people I've kind of found you like to use it around number two and a half or three. That's where I like to use mine is, is around two and a half or three. I kind of try to make that the normal as Gibbs used to call it. They had a giant N right here for normal. And uh, I wanted to, I just said, no, it should, it should kind of work for everyone around that place. And, you know, just like Gillette, they had the light, heavy, and regular super speed. It's kind of the same thing. I wanted everyone to find a setting that works for them on it. The only other thing I'd point out with this razor when you go to use it is, you know, try different blades with it. Uh, just because your favorite blade may not work with it, try other blades. I used it and prototyped it the most with Paul Silver and Permasharp blades. So a lot of people have said it works best with that, you know. There's no international consortium of, of blade dimensions. And even you think the blades are all the same, double edge, right? Well, no, there are actually a little bit of variations. Feathers to rapiras to astras, you know. So the, uh, the blade we used the most to try it out was Paul Silver and give it a shot. Um, it's really designed to be a, um, a razor that for me is a one pass and done kind of razor. It leaves such a nice smooth shave with just one pass. Other people will do the multiple passing, that's great. So um, that's all I got on the Ambassador. I, I would love to have any questions or comments, please leave them below uh, on this video. I would be happy to answer any. Uh, that's, you know, anything more specific or more in depth. That's all I got. The Rex Ambassador is a, is a razor that's near and dear to my heart and I am very happy that it's been so popular uh, on the market and so widely well received and widely loved. So if you have anything else, tell me below in the comments if you've used it, if you love it, if you hate it, if you sold one, you know, whatever. If it's on your, if your Christmas list this year, let me know. And if you do enter a comment, you're entered in to win this our official Razor Emporium Black and Blue t-shirt. Thanks so much for watching. Please share this video. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you already haven't. And we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for 
all things vintage shaving. Thanks guys. I, feel, I just kind of blabbed and blabbed and blabbed. Is that too much? It's a long blab. I, I mean, it's a lot to talk about with this razor. It's, <laughs> it's a long story of how this razor came to be and all the different things about it. This is like a love affair.